appreciate you doing this, man. Oh man, it's all good. That's what's you know? up. Yo, hold on real quick. I just got I just gotta go change my shirt real quick. <laughs> I just gotta change my shirt real, real fast. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> you don't wanna do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about the good vibes, the good vibes. We bout to have a good time, a good time. Leave my problems all behind, all behind. We living out the good life, the good life, yeah. I ain't gotta worry about a thing. Oh no. Had some obstacles I overcame. Oh yeah. You don't have to ever be the same. Oh lord. Cause when we change the mind, we change the game. Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Kenny Clutch, with another episode on the Clutch Vision Podcast. I got a very, very, very special guest in the building. Philly, Jersey, Delaware, b more. Y'all know who it is. This man, we grew up with this man, you know what I'm saying, on, on the sound waves out here on the East Coast for years in the late 90s, early 2000s. And he's making major moves on TV, making that transition from the radio to the television I got my man, we know him as QDZ, you know, but but he is Quincy Harris. Welcome to the show, man. It's love, man. With much love, Kim, man. I, I appreciate you having me, uh, you know, on here, man. Uh, you know, we met, you know, a couple of years ago and, and just, you know, your story, your family story and just how you, you know, push through and overcome, man, it's, it's, uh, it, it has inspired me, man. So this is well. an honor. Thank you, man. I appreciate you for coming out, man. I'm ready to rock with you. Um, our audience is ready to hear you and hear your, your story and and let's 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 change some lives and everything with this, man. So I'm gonna jump, I'm gonna jump right on in, you know. So so take us to the beginning, you know, when you when you first started on radio, you know what I'm saying? Like t- tell us what, what was that experience like in your in your climb uh, you know, in the radio industry. Yeah, so um you know, I was when I was a kid. I was 12 years old. Um, I would sneak and watch TV, um, late night, late night TV. David Letterman, Johnny Carson, and only like once in a while they would have like artists I really cared about. Oh, I love rap music. Um, they would only have like, you know, it would be like every six months, right? And then I stumbled upon one night. Uh, I was watching Fox, ironically, and I saw Arsenio Hall, and mm-hmm. I was like, oh my goodness, this dude! I watched him one night. He had the Fushnikins on with Shaq. And then he had Easy E on. I was like, "Yo, I want to do what he does." Right. Yeah. And um, I literally, you know, made a made the decision early on that that was what I was going to do. Um, mm-hmm. I went to Temple University. Really didn't want to go. Shout out to Temple, but um, my parents were like, "Yo, stay at home for a year." And I, in my mind, I already had it planned out. I was like, "All right, if I can get into radio, I will learn, I will meet artists, I will meet, have different connections that I can segue to TV. That's always been my goal. Mm. Because, you know, you know, at the time, BET was in DC. I'm taking you back, like. Wow, yeah. Before they made the jump to New York, BET was in DC, um, and everything else that was big was either, Yo! TV Raps was in New York, but they already had a host, and LA was like movie. So I was like, okay. I kind of calculated, I was like, all right, for me, it's, it's going to be radio because I've always listened to radio. Um, me and my boys, we went to high school together, but we went to Temple, stayed home for that year. After the year, I was like, you know what? I might as well stay here and, and finish. Um, me and my second year, me and my boys, we went to Powerhouse. Powerhouse is a concert. You know, my yeah, yeah. I was like, yo, I'm trying to meet some people. So we snuck backstage, snuck backstage, uh, ran past security and got to the stage and I met Kobe Cole. Kobe Cole is, was a big radio personality out here at the time. And I was like, yo, trying to get on. <laughs> and he, he was like, uh, okay, uh, send your resume. But to me, I always looked at any small, you know, flicker of light that was God talking to me. Right. You know, and um, I went home and then, you know, at the time I was an avid radio listener, but then it made me like listen every day. I'm listening every day, every day. And I'm hearing on the air, it said, uh, yo, you want to learn behind the scenes of the radio industry. Right in 99, we're essay, whoever we pick, you get to come up here, you get to learn. I'm like, oh my goodness. Because at the time, I was a sophomore at Temple. Mm-hmm. And you get a, 
uh, an internship when you were a senior. And to me, that made no sense. I'm like, so I got to do all these classes right. just one semester that I get to intern for somebody. So I took, I literally took my internship in my own hands, wrote the essay, came back to Temple, was talking to some, some of my friends, found out that Kobe Cole went to Temple. Somebody was like, yo, I know his, his uh, counselor, send me your resume. At the time, I wasn't even qualified. Like I, I worked at a supermarket. Before that, I worked at, uh, I was a layaway boy at a, a children's clothing store. So I didn't wow. even have yeah. You know, and a lot of times we, we let credentials or things we think we need in order to go for what we want to uh, achieve. And I was like, no. So I sent it. I don't know how I got in, but somebody gave me a call for my 99 hour essay. I get in. I work my way up. I was working for this DJ. The DJ got fired. Kobe Cole takes over her position. Mm-hmm. He's like, yo. He's, he's on the air one day. Like, he would have me come up two days a week. I'm listening those other days. And he's like, uh, if you want to work, if you want to work behind the scenes of the radio, write a 99 word essay. I was like, yo, Kobe, you're about to give out my job. Right. Like, All right, but listen, how much, and at the time I didn't have a car. He was like, how much is your trans pass? That's a, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, way. yeah. <laughs> I was like, 1725. He's like, All right, well, look, you got to come up here every day, five hours a day, uh, Monday through Friday, and I give you $20 a week. Wow, twenty dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. So imagine, like, and it, again, I didn't let money right. determine, you know, my trajectory. So I was like, all right, I took it, and the rest was history. I met Cos- Cosmic Kev. Me and him got cool. Started working on the Come Up Show. It was just like that was Kobe giving me that shot was the thing that led me to so many, you know, different things in my career. Wow. And for those that don't know, the Come Up Show was was the show, like. That was the joint where, you know, where you heard a lot of the, the up and coming artists, you know, coming on. And I remember, you know, listen, I used to have, you know, my two radios, you know, side by side. So I can go ahead and record the come up show. And I had used to have a tape deck. We used to have a spot in Willenborough called Sound Expressions. So I used to go Sound Expressions, go ahead and get my, get my blank tapes and put them in the tape deck and go ahead and record the show. So... Yo, man, that joint was, it was classic for, for, you know, for us, especially like in middle school. Oh, dude, let me tell you something. I was, you know, at the time, you know, when that was going on, I was sophomore, junior in college. And, you know, like you said, it was up and coming artists. This, that show literally laid the platform for relationships mm-hmm. that I developed years later. Um, you know, we had a, a young Kanye West come to the show. Mm-hmm. Right after his car accident, you know, before Jesus walks right. in freestyle, 50 Cent, Cameron, Noriega, Michael Blackson, yeah. you know, Blackson would come up on a come up show. Um, it was just so many different celebrities before they were big celebrities would come through the show. And that's how I, you know, really developed a lot of my great relationships, you know, in, in entertainment. Yeah. So, the, for, so for, for those that are, that are, searching right now they're looking for you know what what it is that they want to do in life or searching on how they can get into the niche that they're already in how important are relationships getting to where they need to be i mean relationships are the number one thing and you know i would say tied with relationships is giving like a lot of times we want to we want to take we want to get to our goal but along the way you know, giving let open so many doors for me. Like the way me and Cosm Kev got cool was I was working on Kobe Cole's show and he would do an hour there. He would do an hour, eight o'clock hour. And then he had, the, you know, he had like, um, he, w- he had like an hour on the hip hop show that was on. And me and him, I would say, look, dude, every time, because this is, you got to think, I know we can't think about it. But this is pre-internet. Yes. So... This is, I would only know something if it was hot in, in South Carolina, if I knew people from South Carolina, mm-hmm. North Carolina, LA, right? And then college is one of those places that it was like a breeding ground for all these different people. They would tell me about these different artists. We would argue about hip hop. It was something about these different people that didn't make it up here yet. So me and Kev got cool and I'm like, yo, I don't know if you know, but it's this dude named Juvenile and these dudes called Cash Money that- Yeah. Are- they blew up, man. That was, they was the squad. Giving <laughs> him intel on all these different artists that I was learning from Temple 
just like being his ear to the street. So him, me doing that with him, giving, mm. just give, opened up a door, got me a slide on the show. Me giving to Kobe Cole got me on the morning show. Like, so my whole career, I, I, all I'm saying is, I say all that to say, you got to give. Yeah. But how do you, how you get, how do you gain relationships? You gain relationships by giving. Mm -hmm. Find out what somebody needs and give it to them. If you know you want to be, I don't know, a baker, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe you can be an, a cashier for even right now, Corona, the coronavirus is going on. Maybe you could be a delivery boy for the, for the baker. I'm just right. saying, for instance, like it's just, I'm giving examples. So, so many times we allow what we want to get in the way of what we need to give. Right, right, right. And now you're, you, you've transitioned into TV. So you are like the new Arsidio Hall, you know what I'm saying? And what, for those that are going, we're going through a transition right now, you know, quite frankly, you know what I'm saying? Like, what advice can you give to people that are going through that transition? How do they stay focused? How do they stay, you know, motivated to, you know, continue the process? I would say one, add value. Where, wherever you are, become an asset. Mm -hmm. um, I tell you this, um, you know, my show um, didn't have, you know, w once this hit, you know, I work in the news station. So news is the number one driving force they didn't have any editors working on my show because all the editors were working on news working on the news well, yeah. do a live show again because we can't do live interaction i came up with um a solution and the only reason why i'm telling you these things while, while i'm telling you is because i want you to know that the advice that i'm giving i'm literally doing right so this is two weeks ago um i went to my boss and i was like look I think I can do the show from home. He was like, really? I'm like, dude, I got the equipment. Mm -hmm. Really? All right, do a sample show. Say mm -hmm. no more. Got the sam he, he, They sent me the, the ins and outs of the show, the intro. Um, I got the time it needed to be. And I've already been working on my craft for nine, 10 years. Right. On editing. And I, I shot a sample show. He's like, oh my gosh. Okay how many of this you could do a week. So I'm just saying, I'm adding value. I'm not getting paid to be the editor. I'm not paid to be the producer. I'm not being paid right. I'm paid to be the host, but I'm doing four or five different jobs. For right. the same. So all I say is like, add value wherever you are. I don't even care if what you're doing isn't connected to where you want to be. Add value where you are. Right. It becomes a, a, like a muscle memory of like, oh, I added value here. Once I get over here, I know how to, do the same thing. Right. And it's because it's like, you know, um, adding you're adding value to a major network that needs content and everything at this time as well, too, during during this virus. And you 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 pretty much kind of touched on, you know, my, my next question, but I'm gonna transition it just a little bit into the, the family aspect, you know, and, and during this time, how how important is it, you know, for us to reestablish, you know, values for the American family? Yeah, you, I will say this, right? Before this, we didn't know how good we had it. And a lot of times we are in a position where um, we're looking, we're, we're kind of like, we pray for what we want. We get where we want to go. Forget about that prayer and then make a new prayer and then trying to get to the right. Next, right? So in that, you lose what's really important in life, mm -hmm. right? I found out, you know, you know, a couple of years ago, like it, my family, not only just my kids, but me and my wife's connection, because my wife and, and the relationship I have with her it sets an example for my kids and what they think life is like. So I, I just think right now, all the material stuff doesn't matter. It never really mattered. Um, I think family is the number one thing. It's a mirror of who you are and, and uh, the continuation of your legacy. So I think that's like paramount. And I think people are seeing it now. Yeah, I believe so, man. I mean, I know f for me, uh, being a dancer, um, it, it, the, the transition, well, I was already transitioning into more speaking anyway. So really this transition helped me, one, uh, hone in on my craft a little bit more, start reaching out to more people, you know, just like yourself. Like, I'm just like, I'm in the DMs, like, look, like, let, let's, let's talk, let's see. And, and at the same time, adding value to my audience who needs you know, information right now on how to get to that next level during this time. And I just, I'm, I'm just a firm believer of, you know, when crisis hits, you keep going. 
no matter what. You got to keep going. And as you know our story, and, and you dealt with uh, cancer in your family as well, too. So you can attest, you know, to that. How was that for, for your family? You guys going through the cancer situation. It was it was tough, man. And it, it just really uh, showed me and, and my sister, my dad, you know, you know, my wife and my family that every moment that we have, you know, we're, we're not guaranteed anything. Like, we're not guaranteed tomorrow. Like, we have to really make sure that we're spending time with our family, pouring into the people that really matter. Um, and I think, like, again, like, a time like now, people get to slow down and see what's really important, mm -hmm. you know? Like, I, I'm, I'm not even gonna lie. Like, yes, it's tough. It's tough. Like, homeschooling the kids. I have a little, an eight-month-old baby, mm -hmm. but I, I don't know when I would, been, would have been able to get this amount of time unless it was December. Every December, we take two weeks off at the end of the year. That's the only time I get. I'm getting months worth of time with my family. So I'm just trying to flip the negative into a positive. And I think right now, even with like, you know, a physical, like I'm doing a physical challenge right now. I'm trying to run a hundred miles this month. So I'm posting every time I run like at least four miles a day. Okay. And put it out there on my social media and I've connected on this Nike Running Club app and I got other people. So I know the better how I, the better I feel physically, mm -hmm. the better I am mentally. The better I am mentally, the better I can give to my family. The better I can give to my family, the better I can give to my craft. So right. it's all connected. So I think in this time, like, yo, put a physical challenge out there. Mm -hmm. Connect with like put it out there. Like I literally put it out on my social media. And people, I didn't know that many people ran. Yo, I'm on a Nike Run Club app too. Hit me up. Like, I want to be on this too. So it's it's doing that because that's keeping me sane. Mm -hmm. And the two having real conversations with my my family, my father. You know, I, I I respect the relationship I have with my father even more now because, like I said, with my mom passing away, it's like yo. And being a parent, like seeing how much my parents have uh, poured into us. It, it's um, me and my sister. It's it's a, it's a, this is a real time for reflection. Yeah. And you know, me and my family, we were watching a, uh, a, a YouTube last night and there was this young man, he's maybe about 25 years old and he had an outer body experience and he was at this church down in Atlanta telling his testimony about that. This man, in, in short, he had, he had a, a flu like symptoms and this is this year. This is just recently, this just happened. So he had flu-like symptoms. His uh, temperature was about 106. This is about in January. And as his father is driving him to the, the hospital, he passes out, right? And when he passed out, he, uh, he then had an experience in hell, and then he had an experience in heaven. And he said hell is not necessarily what, what people make it out to be or how to describe it, you know, like where there's a bunch of fire and stuff like that going on, but it is hot. He said, it is hot. You're thirsty all the time. There's a lot of torment going on. Then he said, when he went to, he got to heaven, it was a longer journey to get there. And the one thing that stood out to me was, which is going to go to your point, is that he got to heaven and he just wanted, he was just comfortable in that space. But the thing was, is that he didn't remember anything on earth all he wanted to do was serve god he didn't he was a being he had a body he had everything right he just didn't have he, he just wasn't you know he was more of a spirit but he did have a an actual body and he said that he didn't rem you don't remember family you don't remember friends you don't remember none of that so that right there can attest to your point on how valuable it is to cherish what we have right now cuz once it gone once it's gone it may be gone you know, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, a, a true believer that everything happens for a reason. And I think, even, you know, with this time, you know, I've had, you know, I'm, I'm at an age now where I'm able to see how the dots have connected in my past. Right. right? So, you know, sometimes I've had bad things happen. I'm like, darn, why did it have to happen? But it was preparing me for the next thing. Mm -hmm. right? And right. you, you can't get that until that's when wisdom and I'm not saying I'm wise by any means but I'm just saying like I can that's when wisdom starts to kick in and say okay this is how life is you you got some ups you got some downs 
But as long as you stay the same, man, like, think you Yeah. Think so, so let me ask you this. So what, what drives, you know, you to be so ambitious, especially now, all these years, you from, from, from QDZ to, you know, the Q. That, it's funny you say that. That's a, that's a great question because I had this conversation with my, my dad today. Mm -hmm. and, um, I was talking to him and I was like, man, it's so crazy how, I'm not going to say I'm never satisfied. It's just like, I get to one place and I'm like, that's great. This was great. I got to get to the next stop, right? And and when you're in that mode all the time, you you know, you're not able to you're not able to really like see things, right? But when I was talking to my dad today about that, he just said, you know, life is short, right? He was like, yo, life I can't he's like my dad's 71. He's like, I can't believe I'm 71. Wow. I was just mm, mm. right? But on your way to the next thing, he said, it's, 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 you, it's a balance. You got to, what you're doing is showing growth, but you got to show growth, but you got to be grateful and you got to be in gratitude and count your blessings for everything that you have right now. So when he, he literally said that to me today, hmm. I was like, I received it. So I think, yes, I've always been, I don't know, I've always been like this, but sometimes you got to reflect and see how far you've come. And just be thankful for the small things that you do have in life. You know, I was, I was talking to my aunt. She's 77 years old. I was like, I got to go run these miles the other day. She's like, be thankful that you can still run those miles. Wow. Think about, I don't think about being 77 and can't run. Right. Like how I'm right now. I've run 62 miles so far in the last two weeks. Yeah. Wow. When I'm, when I'm 65, that yeah. won't be happening. Facts. And you know, it's, it's funny because my grandfather right now, who's 96, right? 96, um, he's battling, um, he's battling cancer, bone cancer right now, right? And he's still the, one of the most ambitious people that I look up to. Because even at 96, battling cancer with a, with a broke hip, he still wants to get up and go his body physically can't do it because sometimes his equal equilibrium gets knocked off. So he, in his mind, he's like, yo, I can get up and move, but it's something that's just not connecting. You know what I'm saying? And it's just, it's, it, I, I look at it. It's amazing to see like pop pop, like, dang, you still want to go like no matter what you say. And I think like, that's why I'm, I'm so, you know, ambitious. And then when we take, uh, when we get into crisis, like the COVID-19 that we're in, I look at it as, a, as an opportunity instead of like, you know, a depression. Like my, my question to you is what advice can you give to people that are taking on, that, how can people take COVID-19 as an opportunity versus looking at it of a depression state? Um, I think it, it's almost in everything that you have negative going on in your life, try to write a positive. Um, mm -hmm. We say, hey, I'm losing funds right now. I'm losing money but I'm gaining time mm. with my loved one. Mm -hmm. I, I tell you about losing a, a family member, losing my mom, if somebody would say to me right now, hey, look, you can get a day with your mom, right? Right now, you can get a day with your mom, but may, you gotta lose your TV show. <laughs> see, see your TV show. Right, like, right, right, facts. <laughs> So I, I just think with that, it's, it's just like flipping it. Like what is going, what, how do you look at things? Your, your grandfather is 94. Mm -hmm. He's able to want to still do those things because of what he told his mind. Right. It's what you, what, what are you putting in your mind? Like, I think a lot of times we, we don't look at the diet of the mind. Mm. And I'm saying like, okay, you listen to this music and all they say is just like negative stuff that seeps in. You're watching TV shows and it's negative, that seeps in. So you gotta, you gotta kind of like reverse engineer your mind and reverse engineer the things that are going on. Hey, um, I wasn't able to, you know, I'm, I'm off, I'm losing money. All right, cool. But now you got the time to write that script. Yeah. You got the time to write that book. Yeah. Think about all the things people said they wanted to do before this. And I'm going to tell you, the number one thing on my, on my list was spending time with my family. Mm -hmm. I 
wish I wasn't spending my time with my family like every second minute, every freaking minute, but this is what I asked for. Yep. I, I asked for it. So I think it's just reverse engineering, reverse engineering your mind and make sure that the people that you're talking to in this season aren't, you know, aren't pulling you down. Yeah. You know, that's, that's a, that's very important. Yeah. Like, you know, like you gotta, because like, think if you wanted to, I don't know, write a book, you talk to the wrong person. And you like, hey, I'm thinking about writing my book. You can't write no book. Right. Right. It's, it's like, yeah, it's like, you know, what, like, I tell people all the time, watch your intake. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Watch your intake. It's not just about what you eat. It's, it's, it's who's putting what, what into you. You know, what are they speaking into you? You know, like there's so much power in the tongue. You can either speak positive or you can speak negative. There's no real in between at all, you know? And if, if people are speaking neg- negative to you, you know what I'm saying? Like you just said, that's going to that's gonna seep in. It's going to stay there, you know? I was having a conversation with my man Trent Shelton. Um, he was on he was on the show uh, a couple weeks ago, and I asked him this question. I'm gonna ask you the same question. You kind of answered it, but I, I'm, I'm gonna just lay it out for you. Maybe you, you can uh, give a little bit more insight on it. During this time right now, if you had the whole world, if you had every ear of the world right now, what would you say to them? What would you say to encourage them to keep moving forward? It's funny. I would, I would just literally say, stop stopping. Mm. You know, um, I've only gotten to this position where I am because I didn't stop. Like, I didn't say I didn't fail. I said I didn't stop. Um, I, I look at friends, Kevin Hart. You, you know, you got to remember, 2003, he had a failed TV show on ABC. It came on Friday nights. Mm-hmm. Fridays, I think it was called the Big House, canceled. Then he was the guy from Soul Plane for a lot of years. Right. <laughs> the guy from Soul Plane, like, mm-hmm. like that was the joke. I remember right. he was in a lovely basketball game with, um, with Jermaine Dupri, and he's like, "Oh, the dude from Soul Plane." He didn't stop. Mm. So I, I think if I if I could tell anybody, it, it's just like really pay attention to your own voice because a lot of times we, we pay attention to out the outer voices of people are like, Hey, you should be this. You should be that. What do you want to be mm. after it? Stop stopping. The, pe- the people that we see that have done everything that we're seeing that they're doing and having these fantastic Tyler Perry, these fantastic lives. He didn't stop. Right. So why are you right? There it is. There it is. So man, I wanna I wanna end this off with a game. You down? <laughs> All right. So uh, a lot of people don't know that uh, clutch is an acronym, right? So um, before I, I had I had a group called In the Clutch. So that's the game we're gonna play. It's called In the Clutch, right? So C L U T C H. So clutch stands for creatively linking upon the culture of hip hop. Mm. So that's so that's my that's what that's what I'm called Kenny Clutch, right? So. I'm gonna give you a letter, right? And you give me a positive word from that letter that you can think of. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say C, and then you're gonna give me you're gonna give me a positive word. I'm gonna give you L. You give me a positive word. Cool. Okay. okay. Here we go. Lightning round. I ain't got no buzzer or nothing like that. <laughs> Here we go. C. Karen. L. Loving. U. Standing. T. Time. C. Conscious. H. Happy. Clutch, baby. (laughs) There it is. There it is, yo. Yo, Quincy Harris, thank you for coming on the show, brother. I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much, yo. Hey, man. Thank you for just, you know, reaching out and thank you for the things that you're doing. I'm watching you on social media, you know, the places you're going the people you're touching, you know, just by how you, how you're living your life and how your family's living their life, man. It's, it's truly commendable, man. So keep going, bro. Keep yes, going. sir. Thank you. Thank you. Where can everybody see you at and where can they watch the show? Yes. My TV show comes on, uh, it's called the Q it comes on Fox 29, um, weekdays, 
1 p.m. and 12.30 a.m. If you miss it there, nationwide on the Fox Soul app or foxsoul.tv. Yes. Awesome. And then your Instagram is? At Quincy Harris. At Quincy Harris for everything. QuincyHarris.com for everything else. Yes. Thanks, Kenny. There it is, y'all. Make sure y'all go ahead and share this video. Like, comment, subscribe. Share it with your mama, your daddy, your auntie, your uncle, your stepmom, your stepdad, your stepdaughter, your stepsister. I don't care who it is. Make sure your boss get it and then your boss's boss get it, all right? Let's share this positivity across the world. It's your boy, Kenny Clutch. Remember, like I always say, when we change the mind, we change the game. Till the next time, peace.